Welcome to Listen by Jean Ginsberg. This audio experience and podcast is all about social media, digital marketing, entrepreneurship, and interviews with top entrepreneurs in the digital and social space. I am your host, Jean Ginsberg, digital marketing expert, number one best selling author, and award winning entrepreneur. I will be sharing with you strategies, tips, and tactics on how to grow your business and your social media following. Thanks for listening. Hey, Jean, welcome to the show today. Hey, very nice to be here. I'm very excited to chat about digital marketing for the produce industry. I'm glad you're here. You know, when we met over a year ago, I would say maybe over a year ago, I contacted with you through LinkedIn because I needed some mentors over at the community college at uh, Hillsborough Community College. You remember that? Yeah, absolutely. I remember, yeah, we connected on LinkedIn and you were asking me about that, uh, being a mentor. And I think we got something going there, but I don't think I ever, I don't know if I ever ended up being a mentor for any, um, for anybody at Hillsborough, but that's how we got connected. super busy. I remember uh, we started to exchange some emails and you didn't have anybody under your wing yet. And we were getting ready to, you were like, Patrick, you're like, you know, our business is super busy right now. And this was all this uh, pre COVID. So you right. were super busy then. I can't imagine how super busy you are now during COVID. Um, I know that a lot of businesses are struggling, but a lot of people are saying, you know, they're as busy as ever just because new opportunities and, and new things have uh, arisen during, during this pandemic. Um, but really, you know, I've always connected with you via the, the digital marketing. When we first uh, met, I was really, really intrigued by your background, um, your book, you know, and really how you conduct yourself. I would say that's the biggest thing for me, because when I started uh, following um, your LinkedIn post, it was so consistent, Gene. And I was like, OK, I'm like, this is someone that I'm going to start following. And I have. I, I do want you to know that I've, I've been following you probably for over a year now. And that's why I thought it was very important that we had this conversation today, because I believe the produce industry can learn a lot in the digital marketing, social media marketing space. And I believe there's just a lack of in our industry today. Yes. And that's a very good point that you mentioned about consistency. I mean, we're not even getting into the digital marketing and social media side of things yet. This is all like, this is even before we get into it. But one of the challenges right. that I see with uh, businesses, and that's not even in your industry only, this is not only, you know, this is not just the produce industry. This is across the board with many, many different industries and, and millions of businesses is the lack of consistency across the board when it comes to their brand. And it's not just a social, social media. Social media is, of course, part of your brand, but you have to be consistent with how your brand looks, how your brand feels, which is like all of the, the materials that we're going to talk about on, not all of them, but some of them, things like the website and the social media, right? So there's the consistency in the brand, and then there's also the consistency of engaging with your audiences. So posting consistently to your uh, to your social media, you know, writing consistent blogs to your website, which would help you with SEO. So we're going to talk in more detail about all of this today, but consistency is such a key point is that your audiences want to see that content on a regular basis, whatever that's once a week, every day, whatever it might be. Um, but it's so critical to be consistent with everything that you're doing so that you look like a legitimate brand and not just like <laughs> fly by night. <laughs> You know, I was, I was going to say, it, it's kind of like our life, right? I mean, you got to be consistent in life, right? So yes. someone doesn't portray you as something completely different than what you really are. I mean, <laughs> I mean come on. I mean, it's, it's the truth. I mean, consistency is a big thing. And, and brands in the produce and supply chain industry are very interesting. I would say interesting and different, Gene, because if you've noticed the produce section, right, you've walked down the aisles, you see everything from like, you know, Green Giant to, you know, Driscoll's to Halo's to, I mean, I can go on and on. And then you go to uh, certain grocery stores and you see private labels, right? right? You see, you know, the Kroger's of the world, the Safeways of the world. You see all these companies that are private bags. So you don't really know really who, who or where that produce is from. Um, but that's all, that's all, is all about branding consistency. And there's reasons behind why, why there's a private label and why those brands are on the, on the shelf 365 days a year. But what I told you off the mic is something um, very interesting. And you kind of looked at me like, are you serious? And I told you that in the produce and supply chain industry, I mean, in the last couple of years, I will tell you, yes, there's been a lot of 
change into developing new ways of getting yourself out there. But like I told you off the mic, I just got one of the companies I've been consulting with for two years to get them to start a website in the last year. And you thought that was crazy, right? Because you were like, Pat, it's 2020. I mean, think about that, Gene. I, I know. I was, I was have to say I'm pretty surprised. I mean, I was almost shocked, I have to say, that even in 2020, there's brands and companies out there that don't have a website, which is like, you know, websites have been around for what, 20, 25 years? I mean, tw at least 20 years. I mean, I remember doing websites by hand a very long time ago. <laughs> um, uh, and I'm just, I'm just surprised that there's certain companies that don't have that. But I mean, in one, in some ways, I mean, these, these kinds of companies that have been around for a very long time, I mean, it sounds like they feel like they don't need it, but I honestly think that they do need it and they should have it. But what, if, but what if you're a, okay, so you're a, you're a grower, you know, you own a couple hundred acres in the central Valley of California, right? Cause that's kind of where I've been most of my life before I'm here in Tampa. And what's the ROI? That's what you get asked all the time. Why do I need a website? I sell to people who pack my fruit and who sell it for me. Why do, why do I need that? Well, what does that bother to anybody? And that, you know, what would be, you know, a convincing factor, not even, or not convincing, but to let them know, like, listen, this is your business. Like, this is what you want to represent because there's a lot of old school, old timers in our industry that just don't believe in that mentality. Right. I think part of it has to do with just the way, yeah, that's a, it's an older industry. So a lot of the people who are part of the industry are probably just not familiar with this or don't really see a value in it. But I think as the age, as the industry kind of ages up and the individuals who are now going to be, you know, taking on the forefront, like millennials, I think are going to find a lot more value in having social media and a website. Um, and, and part of it is again, going back to the brand and, and, and consistency, right? Like you still want to portray and show what your brand is all about even if you are just you know packing or even if you are just you know growing citrus or whatever it might be like you still want to talk about what it is that you're doing what your company does because people want to know like if i'm partnering up with someone like i want to know what you're up to and i can't obviously go to your you know citrus farm <laughs> but i want to see what it looks like in pictures or videos just you know representing that that experience, because that's all, a lot of it, you know, a lot of what we see now in social media is just having that experience, seeing what people are experiencing, you know, like, for example, just recently, Instagram rolled out Reels, um, and I don't know if you're familiar with Reels, it's like a 15 second uh, video that you can put on Instagram, and it's like all about just like, what experience are you having right now? So mm. it's the same thing um, that I would say is, you know, talk about what it is that you're doing in your business, even if it's just picking oranges. <laughs> And it's crazy because I think that that so simple mindset can be so confusing to some. Do you, I mean, seriously, it's almost like the common sense, right? It's like, it's so easy to think about doing, but they probably wouldn't do it. And I remember I just took a trip probably a couple of months ago. I went to Grand Rapids, Michigan, Gene, and uh, I went to go see some of the citrus that was being packed for the Farmers to Families Food Box Program that was put on by the USDA. And... I went to the facility and right on the door, what do you think it said? You know, no can, no pictures, no camera, you know, uh, camera. I had to ask, right. I had to ask, Hey, can I make, you know, can I get some pictures, you know, for the team? Can I get some video for the team? So as I did, so as I was recording this video, um, there was limited access that I was, you know, was getting. And, and I think it was more that the industry, um, how they work, there's certain machinery that they have that they don't want their competitors to know or their packing facility or, or different things like that. Um, but I noticed that it was I, you know, yeah, you could record, but only only over here or, or over here. And I think that was just due to the privacy of the company. So I do know that mentality is still there. And uh, trust me, as a millennial, I walk around with my phone, a camera all the time. And I do get that look from the older generation, Gene, like, what are you doing over there? Like, pay attention. But really, I'm trying to gain content. I'm trying to establish more of a presence, right? I mean, I don't know, maybe coming from you, they'd listen a little better. <laughs> I don't know if they would listen to me. I mean, I think it definitely is a generational thing. I mean, I don't want to get too much into it on, on this uh, episode, but 
Um, you know, it is, it is a very old industry uh, because obviously food has been around for a very, very long time. Um, and I see that in other, in other similar industries like accounting or like finance, which are very older <laughs> industries. And I don't know that it's like very different, but there's the same conceptually, right? Like they've been around for 100, 200, you know, years or something like that. And it's and a lot of the times I see that as well in those industries where they don't want to like share their what they call like the secret sauce or their secrets like, oh, yeah. I have a certain type of machinery it's like i don't know at this point where where we live in the 21st century and it's 2020 i'm sure everybody has access to those kinds of machines if you have you know the the capital to put into that it's not like this machine is a, you know a secret sauce that has only been created for like one type of you know mm -hmm. citrus farm right it's like all of that is, is available to everybody um if they want to buy it so i don't know if really like if the secret sauce is really something that to be worried about. And I hear that all the time, especially in like more older industries. It's like, oh no, I don't want to show what I'm doing because that's kind of like my secret sauce. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And I agree. We don't want to get into a generational uh, <laughs> battle because we all want to thrive together, right? right. Um, but but looking at it, I mean, that is, as, as I always say, there's different problems and solutions you see within the industry. And our industry is going through that change right now, right? We're going through the uh, the change of the generations taking over who's going to be the next, you know, next generation coming up in the family farm. I mean, there's right. seven, eight gener seven to eight generations of uh, family farm workers that are, you know, keep passing the torch one after another. But when it comes to social media, there are ways to growing your business and growing your following to be able to make money. Right. I mean, and not just like, Oh, I made a money off every single post, but be able to make money and drive people towards your business. Can you talk a little bit about uh, the social media presence and, and why it's important that uh, companies should be on social media? Absolutely. So this is not just relevant to the produce industry. I mean, I'll talk a little bit more about that, but it, taking a step back, social media is now, the cost of doing business. Um, you know, you have a facility, you have uh, books that you need to keep, you have an accountant that keeps your books. That's all part of doing business, right? Like that's the cost of doing business. So social media has become that, you know, for, for a while it was on the fringe where it's like, well, I might do social media, but, but now it's, be, especially with the way things have been during, since COVID in the last six months, is that everybody is now on their phones, on their computers, and so much more, you know, before maybe not as much just because of the way things were going. But now, because we're all at home, most of us are at home, um, we are a lot more on our phones and our computers. And so um, where are people hanging out? They're hanging out on social media, they're hanging out on, on websites, they're hanging out on blogs, right? So that's part of uh, you know, the cost of doing business now is interacting with your audiences on social media. So that's kind of just like the bigger picture, but more for the produce industry. Um, I think just, yeah, again, engaging with your audiences. There's, it's not, it's not like you're going to make yeah money off of every single post, but it's also about your brand and showing up every day and being, being consistent, you know, and one of the things I remember, I just uh, recorded a short little video on um, Instagram reels. And I talked about showing up every day, whether that's like your business, whether that's your health, whether that's going to the gym, whether that's your family, you know, whatever it might be, you still have to show up every day to make a consistent change in what it is that you want to be doing. And so it's the same thing with social media. It's like you, if you want to build a brand, if you want people to know what you're doing, if you want to be seen, then part of that is being on social media. Oh, and you said it again, consistency without saying it. I mean, it is a consistent pattern, right? It's, I mean, I hate to say it like a pattern, like it's going to get into your life, but it is, like you said, it's going to start uh, becoming, you know, not a fixed cost because it's going to range, but it is when you start to, you know, analyze your budget is you're putting social media marketing in your budget. Now you're not, you're not putting your budget together and going, yeah, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll go, we'll go do some social media marketing. I just don't know how much yet. You know what I mean? I mean, right. it, it's something, it's a stakeholder now. And, and I do believe that because as we are on our phones, 24 seven, right? We even are tracking it now. Now that Apple uh, gives you your screen time and tells you what apps you've been on the most. I mean, it does, it, it does show you um, what you're doing, how you're doing it. And it does show how much people are on their phones. Um, but again, again, this is a way uh, to promote your business. And again, if you're thinking about print and I was talking to a lady, uh, Anne Marie Uderink from 210 Analytics. This is probably a, back in June but she was telling me that print ads are just, they're dead, right? It's right. during COVID, 
no one wants, look what they're doing at the restaurants. Do you don't know how it is out in Colorado, but here in Florida, everything's a paper menu now. As soon as you say what you want to eat, they're, they're grabbing the menu and they're throwing it away. So mm-hmm. it's like everything's becoming digital. And now the newer restaurants, you're ordering on your phone. You just yep. scan the QR code at the, at, the, uh, uh, at the table and the menu comes up on your phone. Mm-hmm. I mean, so how, how do we look at that? Even think about retail, right? And this is going to be the hardest thing is our industry trying to focus on retail when retail has so much print, right? I know retail is getting more into the, into the media space, but there's been studies that show that a lot of the consumer, the purchasing power, you know, uh, comes from seeing those circulars, right? Getting the papers, getting those coupons. There, people are still coupon clipping is what I'm saying. They are still going out and taking those scissors and grabbing coupons from the papers. How does that transverse to the new 21st century? How is that going to change if you know, or will it? This podcast is brought to you by the Digital Marketing Method Monthly Group Coaching Program, your methodology for growing your business and your social media following. Join me and my group of supportive entrepreneurs and learn how you can grow your business and your social media following, where we cover topics such as Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, email marketing, and so much more. Go to dmgroup.online, dmgroup.online. I mean, I think it's already changing. And I think, so uh, in my opinion, this is the way I've always seen it. And I've been in this space for 13 years doing digital marketing. And I've always thought, and you know, just things are moving in that direction. Like things are going to be a lot more because, because things are becoming more digital, not just, you know, digital marketing and social media, but just everything is becoming more digital and on your phone and just our phones are so powerful now. But I think COVID really accelerated that, you know, I thought for a while it was just going to be kind of a trajectory, like a, you know, like, you know, going up and up and up. But I feel like with COVID, it became almost like a hockey stick, you know, like this is like giant growth and ex- exponential growth when it comes to um, everything being now online, everything being on your phone. Um, Yeah, absolutely. What you mentioned about um, menus, that is everything pretty much here in Colorado and especially in Denver is like you come up there and you scan your QR code on your phone and the menu pops up on your phone. So it's like we don't even, I mean, COVID just made us change how we, our behavior, right? Everything was now before paper. Now it's like everything's on your phone. (laughs) So it's all moving in that direction, I think. I agree. And I think that we just have to think differently right now. Right. I mean, that, that's the main thing is, you know, I had a college professor back in the days telling me, think how to think about things differently. And I, and right now that's so true. So a lot of companies have to start thinking differently if they haven't used social media or any social media marketing uh, now is the time. I mean, I I think that, like I said, the websites, I still think is crazy. If, If you're out there without a website, um, it's time to get your website, whether you're a, like you said, a small farmer, uh, all the way up to, you know, a large fortune, you know, you know, fortune 200 company, which are probably already has it. Um, but keeping it consistent, updating it and being on social media as well. All these things are going to drive, drive consumers or people to your business. Um, one of the things that we talked about off the mic, um, was engaging with your audience. And I think that people forget about that. Even I do sometimes, right? I mean, we talked about it. We, we connect on LinkedIn. I'll like, even you, you always respond. I always see your responses to almost everybody. And it is about engaging with your audience. So talk to me a little bit about that, because I think along with consistency, that's just as important. Yes, absolutely. I mean, that one of the reasons, really a lot of why social media even exists is just, um, is engagement, whether you're engaging with your friends or your family on social media or engaging with potential customers on social media. I mean, it's all you know, down, you know, down to the line, down to the bottom of it all. You're engaging with people, right? Whoever they might be, um, friends, family, coworkers, uh, prospects, whatever it might be. So it's still a part of the, you know, part of the reason why I preach so much about social media is that like, that's where you're going to find your audiences now because they're not on 
newspapers or they're not, you know, they're not on, and even as much on TV, you know, they're not watching TV as much anymore. They're really using their phone. So that if you want to intersect them, if you want to have a conversation or start a conversation with them, it's so important then to be using that platform, the social media um, platform in order to be, you know, to, to engage with them, to respond, to start a conversation, which then can lead into a deeper relationship, right? Because I mean, that's all really sales is. If you're looking for prospects, you're, it, it's all starts off with a conversation and goes into a deeper relationship. A hundred percent. That's what I was going to say. It's almost like the lead generation, right? right? It's like, you're almost just trying to get that lead. You're trying to get that, your, that conversation, it, you know, in the produce and, you know, supply chain world, it's like, we're always chasing, you know, the big retailers, the importers, the exporters, right? Because everything's driven off people purchasing from a retail store or some type of online retail outlet, like your Amazons and things like that. Right. If you're overseas, your Alibaba's, your Q10s, am I right? Right. But if you don't even have a website for someone to send you a message or you're engaging with them, you're never going to get that lead. You're never going to get a right. customer to come back. So, uh, you know, if you're just posting on Facebook and all your social media and you have no strategy behind it, you're not engaging with your audience. I mean, what are you doing? You, you know, you're not really doing anything, but I, I, this is what I call it, Gene. There's always one guy or gal that you have that you do the wave to, like one of your neighbors. You, you don't know their name. <laughs> you just do the wave to them. And, you know, your husband or wife's like, yo, who was that? And you're like, ah, the guy I waved to. It's just, it's just the guy I waved to. I mean, there's, there's always one of them. And that, that's what I almost relate that to is because you can wave to that person all the time. But until you go and say, hey, <laughs> you know, I forgot your name. And you get that exchange. You get that right? Unique, that authentic, authentic relationship started. That's when something can happen off of it. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's a very good analogy in the, you know, Crazy in the real analogy. world with your neighbors to, to social media and interacting online. Yeah. And I think a lot of, uh, so what you mentioned about having a website, like, yeah, part of it is just like people can go to your website and leave you a lead, leave you a question, leave you or whatever. I mean, that could be like, you could be gaining business through that as well. It's not just like for, for the ha sake of having a website. The other reason why I think that the produce industry should have websites too. And this is someone who is like not very, you know, I don't know that much about the produce industry, but I've always wanted to know is transparency, right? Like what, like I see there's oranges that are being grown, but I have no idea what happens to them once they get to the store. And I feel like there's a big gap for me in my knowledge about like from the tree to my hand, <laughs> like what happens. And I think having that transparency is to me would be really interesting to know because I feel like there's just a, a lot of missing pieces for me in my mind. And the website can do that because you can uh, add transparency 100%. to your website by, by doing all of that and like sharing your story, your information, your pictures, your videos, whatever it might be. Yeah. And, and don't get me wrong. We, there are some companies that are in, are in the produce and supply chain industry that do a great job doing that, right? Like I told you, there's like seven, seven out of 10 um, that probably don't, but you get a lot of the larger companies, right? And you've probably have seen this. You can walk into a grocery store, see those little halos or those cuties or a, or an avocado, you know, mission avocado or something like that. You know, these are larger organizations that have a lot larger marketing budget. Jeez, these guys' marketing budget could almost be a, the size of the sales of the other companies that are right. out there. Right. So right. Um, you, it's, it's true though, because they, they do need the, the, the ways to develop themselves and to see that. And I've always thought about that as well, because, if you go into the grocery store and I see this all the time with pineapples and, and Gene, it's like you will go into a store and people see a pineapple and they see it like either really green or they see it yellow. And it doesn't matter. I've heard it from both sides. When it's really green, they say it's not ripe. And then they say when it's just a little bit yellow, they say it's almost or it's just about ripe. It's just about to brown. It's so funny because a green pineapple and a yellow pineapple in the store are both ripe. The, you know, they're picked for ripeness, but uh, here's the thing. You can't scan the barcode. You can't scan anything that's going to take you back to the farm or take you to a website that shows you when this thing was picked. You would actually right. have to dive deeper and go to the produce manager, ask them the questions, right? See if they have a box on hand, that box would have a lock code on it. Like I could tell you, right. It's all tracked, but to the consumer, you're hundred percent right. How cool would it be to go on and all of a sudden, let's just use, um, let's use a uh, dole for example, right? Cause they were talking pineapples or one of those guys. And it's like, okay, you go on, you go to their website, you click on it, you, you 
you type that lot code number in and boom, it takes you to like where the facility it doesn't show you that specific pineapple being packed, but shows you the processing line of that pineapple being packed and says by this facility, it probably would give you, like I said, that sense of brand loyalty, probably a little bit more. Yeah. You would know how your pineapple is picked and shipped all the way to the store. Yeah. I mean, people love stories, right? I mean, just as humans, we that's really how our whole civilization, you know, grew to where it is now a lot of it is just stories and people love that and so having a story about the pineapple i think is it's kind of cool it does create brand loyalty versus just like here's a pineapple and eat it you know <laughs> plus it's there's fun. also like additional content that you can do and 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 talk about you know like how do you know when a pineapple is ripe and how do you know like there's just you know there's a lot of content that i think that is missing from produce that you can also include as part of the story as well so um that's another piece that I think should be used as part of, um, you know, social media and content marketing for our produce companies. And I told you we tried to stay away from it, but I'm going to go back to the generations a little bit because okay. I'm, okay. I'm, so, I'm going to, because listen, when, listen, a lot of your stuff, uh, and I say stuff, your content that you produce, uh, like all the way up to your e-learning courses and your strategy sessions, this is something that I talk about these older generations have been teaching everybody with, I say the legal pad and pencil technique because everybody know. and trust me, if you're in the produce industry, you know about that yellow legal pad and that, uh, and that notebook. It's like when you start your first day, that's what you get a yellow, yellow legal pad. But think about it like this, this generation of farmers, right? Between the baby boomers and the silent generation, they really got this produce industry off and kicking and their knowledge is just, it's, it's, it's not expendable. I mean, it's, it's going to be written in the history books, right? Because this is stuff that helped us grow, for instance, citrus since the, you know, the late 1800s. But as I look at some of the things that you've done, I think that some of these brands could open up and start e-learning courses on, you know, how they vegetate, you know, over the last 30 years, how they were able to keep producing these crops, you know, and, and pass these, you know, I would say courses or learnings and knowledge onto the next generations, because there's only going to be so much time uh, for us to get all that knowledge from that one, you know, CEO, that one farmer, that one person that's been running their business and not using these media outlets to do so. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Although I do probably think that they're going to uh, push back and say, well, I don't want to reveal all my secrets to, you know, and put it in an e-learning course. So I can see that happening as well. But I totally agree with you from like a, from a generational perspective, from a, you know, knowledge uh, share perspective i think it's absolutely true and the thing is like i think there's just a lot of talk about like competition it's like oh well i don't want to reveal my secrets and talk about you know how i built this business because of competition that are going to steal it but it's like there's a lot more people in the world now and they all need to eat so it's not like you're going to run out you know like you're still going to be able to grow stuff and you're still going to be able to sell it it's not like the population is shrinking it's actually getting bigger probably so we, everybody still needs to eat and, still, and people still need produce so i don't think that should be an issue either like talking about competition but i feel like a lot of times i like i said earlier it's like this pushback about like well i don't want to reveal what i'm doing because that's just gonna you know my competition is gonna know about it no, it, it's true, hundred percent. And if I told you how much food waste was in America today on the production side, you, you'd probably pull your hair out like I have. You know I what I mean? It, don't even want to know. <laughs> it's insane. It's insane. Trust me. There's, it's there's so many farmers out there that throw away food every single day because they don't have buyers. They don't have people. And to your point, if you were connecting with with the correct audience, I say right because when you engage and people don't understand that, like you don't want you know. 100,000 or 500,000 followers. And this is something I've, I think it was one of the uh, quotes that you put, you might have uh, posted, but it was like, I'd rather have 100 dedicated, you know, uh, followers than, you know, 50,000, you know, followers, like real followers, you know what I mean? No, I want leaders, you know, 100 good leaders, the good people that are following me, not a bunch of followers or a bunch of ducks. We want good, good people. Yep, absolutely. That's very true. We want, we want the right people to be following us and we want to put the right message out in front of them. Yeah, it's not, it's not about this, like, oh, I want, you know, a million followers or 5 million followers. It's, that's not really the point of it, especially for this industry, you know, because you have 
so many only uh, so many you know people all the, the companies that you could work with it's it's a matter of getting the quality followers that that you uh, that you need and one of the other things that I think you mentioned you know was food waste right what if we can create a much more robust technological platform where we can trade this stuff and or sell this to the right people instead of just like wasting the food I mean that's another I think um, that's another point for why technology I think is so important is that we can create a much bigger market for it, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. hundred percent. Well, like I said, there could be some, some uh, gal on Facebook that runs a food bank in your area and you don't have Facebook or you don't have social media or you don't have a website. How are you telling anybody about your food waste besides you and going and dumping it to the cattle or you're calling all your normal outlets and I'm not saying that that's a, you know, hundred percent, the game changer here, Gene, you know that. Um, but it is like you said, the lead generation. Um, so if you connect with that right audience, the audience could grow probably exponentially, right? It could, it could grow beyond something you never even imagined. And again, it's all about that ideal audience. It's almost like your own culture of what you're creating. Like that's what I've noticed. Even your page, I mean, my page, different pages, we all have our own uniqueness. And I think that's what I'm learning about even, you know, all of digital marketing, social media. I mean, even on the podcast and the editing, the video, all of it, right? All of it is, it's like its own, it's its own unique way. And it's your own unique way of how you kind of run your, your business. I, I don't know. What do you think? Am I, am I absolutely, right? I totally, I totally agree with that. It's, it's uh, part of, it's going to be your uniqueness and what your individualism and, in, you know, how you run your business, but then uh, part of it is just going to be, you know, being part of a much bigger group. And um, so, yes, I think it's, I think I would think of it as both ways. hundred percent. I, I, yeah. and, and listen, I, I thank you for, you know, somehow or agreeing with me because I'm new to this. Like I said, even when I met you about a year ago, this was all still new to me. And actually it's funny. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say something that's crazy. I had to put on an Instagram class at the college um, because one of our uh, social media or digital marketing um, mentors called in sick one day and they said, you know, I believe you guys can read through the presentation. I will tell you that was probably the, the worst and humiliating <laughs> day of presenting, you know, to a bunch of students. But, but what it did was it opened me up to learn more about Instagram, social media, understanding how about you know valuable content authenticity a lot of that i started to learn and then i remember from that day i was like never again am i going to be called out like that and not know like what the heck i'm talking about when it comes to social media even though i still probably can be i just i feel like i'm a little bit more prepared than i was before that's awesome i mean it's all about just learning uh these pieces step by step right i mean one day you don't know it and then then but it, that's how it is with everything, right? Not just social media. It's just you, you learn it. And then I don't know anything about, let's say, growing citrus, right? But you just, you go online, you figure it out, you talk to some people, and then you're like, okay, oh, maybe I can do that myself. I was Same thing say, with social media. Market the heck out of it, though. Yeah. Right? <laughs> because you, you look at it, you're like, well, this, is, this could be fun, right? Yeah. And to a citrus farmer, we're like, oh, great. We got, what, uh, what do we got to do here? Like, what are we doing? Who else do we have to pay to get this thing done? Like, <laughs> right? So, no, it, it's, it's crazy interesting. But, Gene, listen, I, I want to thank you. Uh, for coming on the show today. Again, I'm a huge follower of you and what you have going on over in Colorado have been for over the last year. So I do appreciate everything you do for me because I look at you as a mentor in this space and I do follow what you do. Um, But if anybody wants to get a hold of you, uh, your organization and reach out to you, um, how could they do that? Yeah, absolutely. You could, of course, find me on social media. So if you have Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, you can DM me at any point. Um, You can also go to my website, geneginsburg.com and find me there or learn more about what we do. But um, yeah, I'd love to get in touch. And if you guys need a website or social media, happy to talk to you about that as well. But I, I feel that every brand and company should have that, even if you're just, you know, growing garlic. Because I want to learn more about garlic. <laughs> I agree. Gar- garlic, garlic is a good one too. They have the garlic fest in uh, Gilroy, California. The yes. Gilroy garlic fest. So we definitely know a little bit about uh, garlic, but hundred percent, everybody, if you're out there, any of our listeners and you're looking for someone to ramp up your digital marketing space, uh, Jean Ginsburg and her team over in Colorado have it going on. So Jean, again, thank you for coming on the show today and we appreciate you so much. 
yeah, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it and looking forward to coming back again and talking about advanced social media and digital marketing for everybody's listening. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks.